What's up everybody? Today on Make It Cozy, we're gonna switch things up a little bit. Instead of hanging out in the shop, we're gonna bring it to the kitchen because a lot of you might not know this about me, but I love cooking and so does my family. And I figured this would be a good point to try to introduce something that's been in my mind for a little bit. Everybody loves a scotch egg, but I'm gonna to present to you a Latinx egg. Little twist, stick around. <laughs> All right, so the first thing you want to do, part of any kind of prep, right? Mise en place. What does that mean? Get your stuff together before you start getting, getting down to cooking. So I'm going to do that right now. First thing I want to do is get the chorizo ready, and I'm going to make that myself, right? You can go with store-bought, but I wanted to up the ante a little bit and start doing my own little preparation. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my ground pork, my spices, my chilies, and some vinegar. We're going to throw that together, let it mix together, meld, marry. The flavors are going to be checked on the stove, adjust for seasoning. So let's go ahead and get into that right now. All right, so I'm pretty well set up here. Uh, I got three cloves of garlic. I've got half of an onion, but I'm not gonna use the whole thing. And then in here, I've got my spices that are pre, pretty doodly, right? So we're gonna mix these up a little bit. We're gonna mix it up with some other stuff. What we got in here, we've got half a teaspoon of salt. We got a little bit of cracked pepper, some cinnamon, just a little pinch, little pinch of cayenne, and then we got this other special white powder. I know what you're thinking, Cozy. Yeah, buddy, we're getting into it today, because you know why? MSG, partner, straight up MSG. Don't freak out, dude. It doesn't give you a headache, all right? Don't be racist, it doesn't give you a headache. It's just MSG, it's in everything, man. You get some of that like sprinkle mix for your salad, it's the same thing, man. You know what those sprinkles are? MSG, monosodium glutamate, all right? Just chill. All right, we got the spice grinder, boom, right here. What have we got in here? We got a little bit of fresh cumin seeds right there. We got some coriander seeds right here. And we have the good stuff, dude. The good green. I'm talking about Mexican oregano. All right. Again, don't freak out, man. So we're going to grind these up. We're going to get those fresh spices rolling. That's why the flavor is a little bit different. So if you've had like Mexican pozole, which is kind of redundant, or if you've had uh, menudo and they get that fresh oregano in there, woo, that fresh Mexican oregano, Boy, I'll tell you, it's a different, it's a different flavor compound. Oh, smell that, you can't, sorry. All right, we're gonna dump that in here though, boing. Toast your spices, right, if you're using fresh. If not, just go store-bought, just dump it right in. Same thing with your chilies. I've got one ancho chili. I've also got one guajillo. So what I wanna do there is, I toasted those as well, right? And then just threw some liquid in, got it boiling, and now I got it in this little guy right here. Now, if you go for a big batch, I'm just gonna go for half a pound of pork. If you go for a big batch, you can do just double the recipe, right? Double it up. The reason I say that is because if you're doing a bigger batch, you want to go straight to the blender, right? Just, just go ahead and get it. But I'm going to use my stick blender that goes along with this, right? So we'll get the boat motor. We're going to go, we're going to go straight up. Rough chop. All right, get rid of those. But sometimes what you want to do is check for this green germ. I don't want that. It adds a lot of bitterness that I'm not a fan of. This little guy. All right. That little guy? I wouldn't worry about that little guy. Throw it right in the trash. It's nasty. All right, We're not, we don't need it. It's, it's a small batch, all right? And if you throw this in and you just chop it willy-nilly, it's going to add a little bit of bitterness, and you're going to say, yo, maybe you don't have a lot of bitter taste buds, but I know a, fun, a bunch of people who do. And with a small batch like this, if you throw this in there, like, look at how big this is. Look at this. Look at how big that is compared to this little guy right here, right? So you want to get rid of that for sure. And then, boom. Get them down. Protect your fingers. Just give it a rough chop, right? The blender is going to do the work. All right. This one, um, I only really need a quarter, so let's just, boom. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get our chilies, our veg, and our spices in the bowl. This has been going for about half an hour anyway, so it's probably, you know, you just need it to get pliable. You don't have to go like super critical on it. So uh, that's what's up. I'm gonna put all this together as well as the apple cider vinegar. We'll get the mix and then we will put it in the pork, mix it up and fry it up. So we got the pork. We've got the goo. Plop. 
If you want to go uh, super fancy with it, what you could do is even just take this mix right here and just um, put it through a sieve. You know what I mean? A sieve. A sieve? A sieve? A sieve? A lot of goo. I probably should have uh, portioned this out a little bit better. You know what? We're gonna go full pound. We're getting the other half. I flattened it out in preparation for freezing. There's another pro tip for you. If you flatten your meat before you stick it in the, the freezer, it'll be easier to thaw and, well, rather it wouldn't be easier to thaw, but it'll be quicker. It'll be quicker to thaw for sure. All right, we don't wanna over mix this either. I probably did a bad job of that, but there we go. This is the kind of goo you're looking for, right? It's very gooey. Next thing I wanna do is check for seasoning, right? So we're just gonna take this and you just wanna eat it, right? Cause you wanna check for salt and pepper and your other stuff, right? Not true. Don't do that. You would die. Maybe I'm sizzling. It's going for the close up. Oh my God, yes, look at that. We got good brownage. So you see these little chunks, right? These little red bits right here. That's a piece of the chili that didn't get blended to perfection. And if, if that bothers you, if you, don't want to, if you don't want your folks chewing into a piece of it or you don't wanna do it yourself, that's all right, just, you know what I'm saying? Just just use the sieve, just use a mesh strainer or something. Try to get a, a, as much of that, uh, as much of those skins out. All right. So we got our little morsel right here, right? Let's go for the taste. It's got good chili. I can taste the guajillo, I can definitely taste the ancho. The ancho gives it that raisin like, like, uh, like the dried fruit kind of feel. Uh, as far as taste goes, the guajillo gives it a nice, a nice good chili flavor. So it's got a little bit of smokiness in it. It's got a good texture. I think the salt is fine. I say I nailed it. Only thing is that like there's cinnamon in there. If you want a little bit more heat as well, right? I don't really taste the cinnamon. I, I know it's there, but like if, mm, and the aftertaste. If your guests don't really, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, what is that? It's like, oh, that's the cinnamon. It definitely tastes Mexican oregano. But if you want a little bit more heat, uh, Pick up the, the cayenne, or you could even add uh, chili chili peppers like into your into your blend, right? So you can do that with like a serrano. Um, you could use jalapenos, habanero, the fire breathing dragon, or whatever the biggest scoville you like, the dirty scorpion or whatever. Carolina Reaper, if you're you know like a wuss. <laughs> I'm kidding. We got the chorizo ready. We're gonna let it set up in the fridge for a little bit. In the meantime, uh, we're gonna let those flavors meld and we're gonna get our eggs prepped. So let's go ahead and do that next. Boom. Slap your meat. Tell it thank you, right? Thanks for being so delicious. We'll see you in a little bit, baby. Boom. Let's talk about eggs. Let's talk about how we're gonna prep our eggs. Now, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna cheat. You get your big old pot ready, boom. You got eggs in there, right? I got eggs in the basket. And you say, why are they in a bag, dude? Because we're gonna sous vide these bad boys, all right? I don't want any guesswork. I don't wanna have to guess like some other popular cooking shows are like, look, you can do six minutes, throw it in an ice bath. Put it, steam it for six minutes. Do it in a water bath for six minutes. Do it in steam for six minutes. Keep it on the countertop for two minutes and then put it in a nice bath. Or maybe it's like, Bring your eggs to room temperature and then put it in the thing. Take them out of the fridge and then put them in the pot. Too many variables, man. So you know what we're gonna do? Boom. I'm a chemist by trade, my friends. I like the immersion circulator because I can control the time. I can control the temperature. I can control the outcome. But you know what's cool about eggs is they've got their own shell, bro. They got their own shell, just drop them in. It's not a big deal, right? Do it gently, you don't want them to snap. And I'm gonna do four eggs because you know what? While sous vide does give a lot of good reproducibility, it's not 100% foolproof. I would love it if it were, but sometimes some eggs, you know what I mean? Like some, are, some eggs are a little bit crazy, so. All right, we're gonna get this guy up to temperature. We're gonna do 195 degrees. We're gonna go eight minutes, all right, so. I'm gonna take my eggs out just for demonstration purposes. I just had that like that, right? So let's get these back out because what you don't wanna do is have them cook the entire time that it is coming up to temperature. Reason being is because you will have hard boiled eggs and we want a soft boiled egg.
Five minutes. Leave them here for five minutes. One thing that kind of trips people up is what to do about shelling the eggs whenever they're ready. So we put them in the ice bath for five minutes. And then what I did was gave them a little crack. And if you look at the bottom of the ones that I've already done, especially this one here, right? The, the broad side of the bottom usually has a little dimple in it. So if you give it a little crack, stick it back in your ice water bath for about two more minutes, and then it'll be easier to take the shell as well as the little protective skin. So if you're looking right here, right? You got shell right here, but then you've got this little guy. And I think this, hold up, let me try to get up in here. Yeah, you see like, there's no shell behind this, right? That's just that, come on man, focus on me, dog. There's just that little, that little skin, that little skin bit. And that's what you wanna to try to peel off. You don't wanna to try to peel off the shell. You wanna get that skin. See, you can kinda of see it peeling while I'm doing this. And I think that's what ties up. You can see it folding right there. That's what ties people up. Because what happens is, is if you don't put it in that two minute to let it soak and get up underneath there, you get this, right? That leads to frustration. I didn't do it on this one. I didn't give it a little crack. And you can see there's like little crags in it and stuff. And that doesn't make for a very good egg, even though it's gonna be wrapped with stuff. But just as a little tip, you can put that in your back pocket for later. Check this out. Oh yeah, see, look, look, look. There you go right there. Boom. Also check it out. Paper towel trick, mm, quick cleanup, done. Shibori napkin, I made this, check it out. Now that everything's settled up, we are ready to assemble. So we have our eggs, we have our flour that is mixed with a little bit of salt and some Aleppo pepper, that's why it's red. And then right here, we just have a simple egg wash. Again, it has a little sprinkle of salt, maybe a two pinch. And then we have our panko, but not just any ordinary panko. I wanted to really reinforce the Mexican corn and all that good stuff. So these might look familiar, right? Vegetable group, all right? These guys, I ground up and I just mashed them again in a mortar and pestle. Uh, add a little bit of chili powder and again, some salt, right? So this is gonna give it a little more color and also hopefully more corn flavor. If you can't find those, maybe you can use like corn chips or something like that. I rolled out my meat. I uh, got it pretty flat. I'd say maybe it's uh, eh, eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. And I just sandwiched two pieces of cling film and then I use the rolling pin, right? The first thing I wanna do is wrap the eggs. And I wanna take one egg. This is our soft boil. Dip my hands in a little bit of water. I have a little bowl. Right here, it just has water, just to help me move the meat a little bit better. So, let's go ahead and wrap it up. So like I said, we want this pretty thin, and then cover up all those holes. Kind of slap it into place. I can already tell this is pretty bulbous, so we're gonna smack that over there. We want it to be thin, right? We want a thin layer because what we don't want to do is poison people by having a rich golden brown layer on the outside and then having a, uh, you know, death by botulism, right? We don't want to kill our, our friends, so make sure that you get a nice thin layer of meat. And this is gonna go right into the dredge, so kaboom. I'm just gonna do this one here. And of course, I wanna keep wet hand, dry hand. And I'm just kind of smacking it around right here. And now we go into the egg wash right here. So I'm gonna use my wet hand. And all I need to do is get it wet. I don't have to, you know, go too crazy with it. This is just one egg, okay? Then this is gonna go right into the dry mix, which is the panko with corn yummies. So bump right in there. And what I like to do at this point 
is set up a little dry insurance. I pat that into place and then I start rolling. That way I can kind of keep my fingers less alligator-like and more dry. Okay, and there we go. We got one down. I'm gonna stick this in a ramekin and bust out the rest of these. And we'll see you here in a jiffy. All right. We're sitting at about 375, which is good because it's gonna drop the temp whenever we drop the ball of yumminess. So let's go ahead and do that now. We've got everything set up. Set up, ready to go. Oh yeah, it's a good sizzle. Now, real important thing, right? You don't wanna overload your pan with oil and you don't have to go crazy with it. You don't need to bring out like the stock pot full of stuff, you know what I'm saying? So what we wanna do is get some nice coverage. Do a little baste, right? Flip it. A lot of water. All right, beautiful baby. Cut it on both sides. Now it's gonna look a little bit crispy. That's just because of the peppers and the flavoring and all the stuff that we put in the batter. Uh, be cool, man. It's gonna work out. Oh yeah, look at that. Let's go ahead and get the next one down. We'll let this guy chill out a little bit, come to town. Right, big dog, you ready to roll? Yes. It says, yes, I am, Cozy. Throw me in there, baby. Base, base, base. Look, it like turns white. That's kind of weird. All right, when you're working with small amounts, it's good to keep everything hot. Hey, baby. It's flopping on me. Problem with it being round is it doesn't want to stand up. Kaboom. Yeah, you got nowhere to hide now. Oh, that's focusing. We especially want to baste it a lot because like uh, we're getting that sausage cooked, right? We're gonna, we don't want to just cook it on one side and then keep it going. You're gonna be like almost well done or it's just not gonna carry over, right? Because you got it in the hot oil and then you flip it and if it's not completely submerged, like if you got like a deep fryer or a, or a fry daddy or something, I mean, that's cool. I do not, so this is the way that I'm rolling. I wanna make sure that like there's carryover because I force it, I'm forcing it with the base. Also take precaution when you do this, right? I'm a home professional self-proclaimed professional so i kind of know what i'm doing i've been frying stuff i used to work in a restaurant right i feel pretty comfortable around the fryer i also feel pretty comfortable in the kitchen it's also probably pretty good too right whenever you flatten your sausage out what'll help you is if you bring it up to room temperature which isn't going to be that difficult because it's flat right let's take it off the heat all right i'm gonna let these rest for follow my fingers follow my fingers it's over there. It's over. All right. I'm going to let these rest for maybe eh, five minutes. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I know. The anticipation is killing me, too. But I tell you, this is the same guy that I just threw in like five seconds ago in this video based on movie magic and so forth. So whenever I tell you that this is not doctored in any way. I didn't go back and make 13 other eggs because that's the glamorous one. Nope, this is the one right here, right? So. Okay. I'm nervous too. Oh. Oh, yes. So give me a knife. Boom. So like I said earlier, I'll go pepper. Just to reinforce some, some chilliness. All right, let's go in for the taste. All right, here we go. Whoop. Woo! They're sliding. It's sliding around. Oh, yeah, even this piece that flaked off, it feels pretty hard. Hey, Patita, you want some chorizo? Get us chorizo. Patita, andale, de la She's all right. She's a cool duck. Oh, God. Ooh. Okay, enough goofing around. Let's get into this.
Oh yeah, man. It's nice and crunchy. It's sticking to my lips. It's like egg lipstick. That's the crunch. We're gonna get the smoked sea salt on this one. Do a little sprinky dink. Let it rain down. Oh yeah, look at that. It's like a beacon, right? Like, search for the gym. Now granted, even though we seasoned the flour, the egg, the panko, and the corn snack, we seasoned the meat as well, right? So that's good. Maybe we should have added a little more salt to the flour just so the egg was cooked a little bit with some saltiness, but that's okay. A little finishing salt. For those, I have, my palate is like, oh, it needs more salt. Oh, it needs more salt. And people are like, mm, it's kind of on the verge of salty. And I'm like, it might need more salt. So take that <laughs> with a grain of salt. But yeah, look at that gooey. Oh, we got to squeeze it. Hold on. You see that? Oh my God. Yes. Oh, give me some of that. So if you're feeling, you know, hold up. My glasses are falling down. I'm not in my head. Yeah, yeah, this is good. This is what's up, man. Bring in the Christmas season or the holiday season. Make some of these right? Soft boiled egg. Boom. Chorizo. You store bought. It doesn't matter. Flour. Egg. Panko. Breadcrumbs. Corn nuts. Whatever. That's probably why these got a little bit too dark. I think the corn nuts had some sugars in them or something. High risk, low reward. Don't go to the 375. I didn't, I mean, if you're doing a lot of balls, scotch eggs at once, I mean, maybe it'll drop the temperature a lot, but even still, do it, man. Scotch eggs is where it's at. I love them, they're delicious. I wanted to put a Mexican spin on it. Chorizo, boom, try it, it's delicious. This is my first cooking project. If you like it, let me know. Hit me up in the comments, what would you do differently? What other kind of things do you think that you could do, right? Do like some Italian, do an Italian uh, sausage. Buy some Italian sausage, put it in there, roll it up. You can put some like parsley and, and oregano in the, in the dredge, right? Whenever you do the, the fry up. Go Portuguese. Do like langanitsa or whatever. That's whatever you want to do, man. Different sausages. Do um, do Hungarian, right? Do Hungarian sausage. Mix it up. It doesn't have to be regular sausage. Just make sausage, man. It's good. It's good stuff. Figure it out. Let me know in the comments. What would you do? Hit me up in the comments. Make a cozy piece. Cooking stuff. Maybe more coming. Let me know. Mm -hmm.